Alrighty guys, welcome back. Earlier we were discussing the Dallas Cowboys and their uh, free agents. Um, and now we're going to be diving into um, some of our oddities of the day. We've got... I, I've picked some interesting stories today. I, I did my hard work <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> she put a little blood, sweat, and tears out there. I did. I was us. hard at work yesterday. Um, so our first one is um, Japan's Naked Man Festival ends after more than a thousand years. Okay. <laughs> you know. um, an annual <laughs> event commonly known as the Naked Man Festival came to an end after nearly a thousand years due to the declining population in the area. Um, the Somni Sai Festival, commonly known as the Naked Man Festival, involves hundreds of loincloth clad men gathering at the uh, Kokosichu uh, Temple in Oshu to wrestle for ownership of a bag of talisman blessed by the temple's chief priest. The festival, which dates back for more than a thousand years, is held annually on the seventh day of the Lunar, lunar New Year. year. Um, Daigo uh, Fujinami, chief uh, priest of the Kuko, gosh. <laughs> All I'm saying is you pick the one with the Japanese name. I'm just going to point that out to you. Uh, chief priest <laughs> of the temple announced that this year's festival, which was held Saturday, was the facility's last. Um, they said the decision is due to the aging of individuals involved in the festival and a shortest of shortage of successors. While efforts were made to continue the festival to the best of our abilities in order to prevent last minute cancellations or disruptions in the future, the decision is to cancel the festival itself has been made. This year's winner was a local resident uh, who is a member of the festival's uh, preservation association. Um, they said, it is sad that the festival is ending. I participated in hopes that it would be a memorable festival. Okay. One thing, again, I know a lot about Japan and some of these areas, they have a very old population. Mm -hmm. They have a very older but vigorous population. And one of the big problems that they're having in Japan is their, their, their population is an aging population. And so they're some of these festivals you're talking about, monks and priests and all this stuff, this is not the festival you think it is, Faith. It is not the festival of, of naked men with six pack abs. No, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the festival of man boobs and saggy butts. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, I don't really see these guys as the most, you know, fit, vigorous group of men. So I, this is not the festival. This is not the festival down at a Daytona beach or, or any of your spring break festival. This, this is, this is the, the, the old man wrestling festival. Um, that doesn't surprise me uh, that this is, this is kind of going on. This is not like Groundhog Day where you're like, you want to go see Pachitani <laughs> Phil. You know what? You can go to that festival. Matter of fact, we'll send you on that as an assignment so you can check out the, the, naked, the naked Man Festival and report on it. I'm okay, really. That's all right. <laughs> it's over, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over. Um, Japan's a fascinating place. Mm-hmm. I love Japan. Um, many years ago, I was supposed to move to Japan. Still bitter with my family right to this day. Because I was supposed, I had worked out a, a situation to move to Japan. And it was only a few weeks before I'm supposed to fly out. And then my whole family had a full on intervention to stop me from moving to Japan. And so I never moved to Japan. Intervention. Yes. They were all worried, you know, a lot of black families don't like to travel outside the U.S. They like to stay home. <laughs> and so the whole concept of, 
of my parents, their their pride and joy son moving to another country was just very, very bizarre. Hence, I still ended up moving to another country. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was supposed to move to Japan. And uh, so I know a lot about the Japanese culture. I've always been fascinated with the Japanese culture. Uh, an amazing, amazing place. But there are a lot of these type of festivals that are that have been going on for years and years but the audit but the the population has become has many of the cities the population has gotten so much older that some of these festivals are being canceled and or they don't have enough people to participate in some of these festivals that are 100 200 years old and so it's it's kind of a shame it's a it's a compliment to the society because the Japanese are the are the people who live the longest, which is which is kind of cool. But it's also sad that it's it's a it's a it's a country with with a majorly, you know, a population that is definitely aging, and some of the some of the more remote farm type fishing village, the young they're packing up they're moving to tokyo they're mo they're moving to the big cities and so a lot of these old old time villages that are in parts of parts of japan they just have an old population same italy's a lot that way as well where there's a lot of places where uh the population is has gotten old so much so in italy that there are places and towns that will pay you to move there right now they'll hook you up with a place to stay and cash if you move there so which is kind of different faith is looking at me like okay <laughs> what would you think about moving to italy <laughs> yeah <laughs> italy is nice but no there are some, there are parts that will pay you uh to move to italy that is a, that is dead truth <laughs> I will say, though, it, this is kind of sad because this is something that's been going on for almost a thousand years and they're having to cancel it and not do it anymore because nobody's doing it. It's right. So it's sad. just it's like I said, it's because in these villages, the young people are moving out. It's the same here, like in Portugal. Um, I used to have an assistant that used to work for me. And he was he was talking about how it was really hard. He's really in shape guy, good looking guy, super sharp witted, everything. And he would talk about how it's hard to find uh, a spouse or significant other that is Portuguese in the area because a lot of the young ladies once they get a certain age, they've been moving out of the area. Well, that happens in Japan, Italy, and a lot of places as well, where it's just like the young is not staying in, in the small fishing villages anymore and all the little, the little farming communities. They're moving to the big city where there's more opportunities. And so, you know, it's kind of like that. Even you like take Georgia, for instance, you go to some of these little formerly farming villages, the farming towns and cities, they're struggling as well because the young are not staying in these places. They're moving. They're like, forget this. I'm moving to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, not where I'm maybe, from. <laughs> not, not, not my girl Faith. But you see, you also live in a little bit more affluent, more nicer community. Where, But if you start going to some, some of those r really rural areas, of Georgia and Alabama, the young is like, get me the heck out of here. See, I experienced the opposite because like I grew up where I live now is not where I grew up. Um, and I grew up in a very like small rural town in Georgia. And mm -hmm. I a lot of people stay there. Not a lot of people move. That's what I've experienced in like, Interesting. small rural I, towns. They and stay. See, I have friends of mine and family members that live in that southern part of, of Alabama, which is on closer to in Georgia. And 
places that I, I grew up going to as a kid, you know, you can't find any of the kids that you used to play with as a kid because they've moved. Mm -hmm. They've moved to Atlanta. They've moved, you know, even even in Alabama, a lot of those places, those little communities, they've all packed up and moved. But it is really prevalent in places like Japan and Italy and things of that nature where people are moving to the major cities. Mm -hmm. There's just more, there's just way more opportunities for a person, you know, who's trying to make it in life, you know, well, than I to stay in a... I think another mm -hmm. reason why is because a lot of people in like my generation aren't having kids. Like not a lot of people are having children anymore. And I think that's a big part of it as well. Yes. Oh, yes. That is definitely, you know, that's something that the U.S. is dealing with. That's the you that the Europe is dealing with. Gone are the days when you're like in the the twenties and the thirties and the forties where it's like, oh, Ethel May had nine kids. I'm one of eight kids. I'm one of seven kids. You've heard these stories, right? Yeah. And you know, now it's like we had one kid and we stopped. How many, how many families do you know had five? six seven eight kids um not a lot <laughs> not a, not a lot i mean yeah. like my grandparents my great grandmother i believe she either had four or five kids i think my dad is i think it's nine brothers and sisters for him that's like that's unreal nine uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. No. See, you I can't don't even, even want one. That. I don't want any children. So <laughs> nine is just like, whoo. <laughs> I remember um, I'm a big MMA guy. And I, I used to train MMA and all this stuff. And uh, the Gracie family, they had so many kids that I remember they were saying, like, they ended up losing one and didn't even realize he was gone. He had just packed up and moved with a, like a, a cousin or an aunt. He was gone forever before they even found out he was gone. And they were like, okay, go ahead and stay. <laughs> it's like, there's so many damn kids that you lost a kid and didn't even realize the kid was gone. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you just gave one away. Imagine <laughs> that, you know, that is not the day's world. You're one, two. If you, if you see someone with three kids, it's kind of like, ooh, yeah. little Timmy was an accident. <laughs> that was not, little Timmy was not planned. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> they just like, right here. <laughs> you know was what I mean? accident. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was some easy listening on the radio and too much booze or something, but there, there's, there's something. That's three. Now think back, you know, back then, five, six, seven kids, that wasn't so strange back then. Mm -hmm. That's gone away. And the places I like will the, say, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the people that I graduated high school with um, are like having babies now. And it's just like, they're just like popping them out too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Yeah, it, it, it is, isn't it weird? When you start seeing your your friends, I'm going to tell you what's going to mess you up, Faith. First off, take care of yourself, girl. Moisturize, moisturize, <laughs> moisturize. Oh no, no, because oh. I have something to say about that. I grew up in a, uh, a small southern town, and uh -oh. all these girls used to make fun of me because I wouldn't lay out in the sun and tan, and I wouldn't go get in the tanning bed, and they would make fun of how testify, sister, testify, white I am. <laughs> and now it's like I don't have any wrinkles on my face, and yep. some of the girls that I went to school with are starting to get wrinkles on their face, and they're in their twenties. And it's like, who's laughing now? That's why I wore sunscreen. Faith. <laughs> Faith. You ain't even seen it all. I have a class reunion coming up. I think it's like my 35th. I think it's like my 35th or something like that. I'm afraid to go. <laughs> I'm afraid to go. Do you know why? Why? Because some of my classmates look so bad. I don't know who they are. And so like I went home 
a few years ago. And I went to this bar that uh, has been popular in my town. I didn't really want to go to the bar, but it was this girl. She saw me and she was like, Tate. And I was like, hey, <laughs> how you doing? And she's like, I haven't seen you in years and all this stuff. And I'm like, excuse me, uh, who are you? And she's like, I'm, I'm Becky. <laughs> It's me, Becky. <laughs> it's Becky. And uh, her name wasn't Becky. I don't even know what her name was. But it was like, oh, man, I don't even know who you are. I'm looking at her. I'm trying to figure out who Becky is. And and then eventually she got mad. She was like, maybe I shouldn't have effing remembered you. And I'm like, I feel so bad. And, you know, I, there's there's been a few times on Facebook where there's like a guy and he's like a guy or a girl and it's like, hey, Tate, how's it going? And then I look at their picture and I'm like, who the heck is this? <laughs> because they don't look the same people, you know, they don't look like they did. And you're going to see more of that as you get older, as you keep moisturizing and staying out of the sun. You're going to start seeing how many of your friends did not age as well as you did. And yeah. that's Who's laughing that's at Casper now? <laughs> <laughs> I think we got issues going on here, sister. <laughs> Don't be calling Faith no, no Casper. <laughs> I used to get picked on all the time for how, like, translucent white my skin was. And all my friends were like, you need to, like, get in the tanning bed and everything like that. And I was like... No, I'm gonna wear not sunscreen. Now they're like looking like Jimmy Dean sausages. <laughs> <laughs> now they're looking rough. But you know, I'm I'm leery about going to my class reunion, not because it's like I don't, I want to big time somebody or anything like it's no, it's like, man, I don't want to offend anyone. That breaks my heart. To be like oh, someone remembers you so fondly and they can't wait to see you and then you meet you see them and you have no clue who they are yeah. and you're looking at them you're trying and you like nope i have no clue who this person is mm -hmm. and they're happy to see you that's you you feel like a jerk in a way you know what i mean mm -hmm. like yeah you know it is that is a hard thing so yeah. all right i don't mean to tell us to go on break but well, we, we have two to go we got we got two stories to cover on the phone to come back. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about some oddities of the day.